right, well, thanks for joining me on today's video. You say, well, Tom, what's it like to drive a big block four-speed Chevelle with the flapper door doing its thing, right? It is amazing. <laughs> it's the best day ever, ever. Sorry, I get so excited, man. When you get to drive this stuff, this is why we do what we do. This is why you need this car. Everybody, I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. We are talking 71 Chevelle SS454. That's a lot to talk about. Let's throw in a little bit more. We talk about a four speed, factory air conditioning, disc brakes, cal induction hood. Like if you were at the dealership checking off boxes, this is exactly how you would have ordered. You can go fast, you can be a little bit older and still have some AC and then you can have great color combinations. You can have this fabulous looking piece right here, these great wheels and tires. This car drives amazing. And I'll tell you why, because of radial tires, because of disc brakes, because it has a bigger footprint on it, because it has an F41 suspension. We're gonna take some time and look at about all the other things that are here because Chevelles are on, all over the map when it comes to pricing. However, lots of cars have no options, nothing. Some have everything. That's why you'll see sometimes the value is significantly higher than others, and let's point that out. All right, so correct 71 wheels on here. Not Magnum 500s, not uh, rally wheels, not the other way. The correct uh, 71, 72, a wheel that you would have seen on this. Camaros as well. Big block cars uh, got these too. So BFGs, radial TAs, I think is the best muscle car tire out there. First off, it's a 75% better ride than the original style bias ply tires, even though the bias plies look good. Uh, the ride is so much better. Throw in the fact that we have sway bars, we have power disc brakes, we have power steering, we have all kinds of great stuff. We have that little tiny call out right here that says, I'm in it for the business. This one has a little bit more juice on it than I think than the factory originally had it. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty certain that it does. We'll go for a drive, we'll find that out. The best part about this car is the paint and why that's an important piece of it. So let's talk about that for one second if we could, please. So the truth of the matter is you and I could paint a car. However, we can't finish a car. And here's what I mean by that. Paint, good paint is done with the prep underneath. It's always the prep underneath. And here's how you know I'm right. When you fix that nail hole at your house, right? You fix that nail hole and you fix it kind of quick on a Sunday and then you paint it and you came back in two hours and you can still see the work that you did. That's because you rushed it. Body work for panels to fit right and things like that takes time. It takes time. It's all wrapped up in the prep. The last parts of the stages are this. This has been clear coated over on the stripes. You say, well, Tone, isn't that how they all are? No, many people take that shortcut. Why? Because you have to paint the entire top of the car again, right? So it's a whole nother paint job addition to that and it always costs thousands more to put this coat on. But it's important because when you wash and wax the car, you don't wanna be able to feel the stripes. This car here, you can barely feel the stripes because it has so many coats of clear on it, right? So that you can wash, wax, and the stripes won't tear. Throw in this right here, which looks so good when you first start the car. That lines up the way it's supposed to. I just love that thing. That is one of the best things ever. I don't know how well it works because the air comes and hits the windshield. It comes in here like that. It may work like a champ. I don't really know. I don't even care because you throw in that and that. I'm adding hood pins to my coffin and a flapper door. And I'll see you then. All right, so come on up here. This is a big part of what we do. We want to talk about the quality of paint. And it's very important you look at a video and see how crystal clear each one of those letters are crystal clear not that you can see the letters the crystal clear the more crystal clear the letter is the more deep and more wet sanded and more shiny the paint is all right so let's take a peek under the hood maybe you don't want to go to a car show maybe you don't want to look under here very often but if you do want to and you do want to go to a car show it looks really nice all right so underneath here right we're talking about detail stuff Correct, uh, cadmium plated uh, brake booster there. The master cylinder is gray. The battery topper is here. We just need to install it. The correct AC compressor with the right decal, washer fluid bottle, the correct cal induction air cleaner, right? The right intake manifold on here. 
it's just like detail stuff like that. You can see all new wiring under here, new wiper motor. Uh, these are the kinds of things you want to see when you open the hood because it looks so nice, so nice, all right? Uh, lastly, you have your decals here, the hood pins, the, the horns are wired properly, the AC is all set up and working the way it should. This is really, really nicely done, and you'll be very proud to open the hood uh, and show some people that. All right, some little detail stuff that's important. Some people paint the stripes incorrectly. They run the stripes all the way down to the edge of the hood, not correct. Speaker grills. The speakers are supposed to be mounted underneath the package tray like these are done as well. Little tiny stuff I'm pointing out, not that that's going to make or break a car, but when somebody does the detail part like this, it means that you're probably getting a little better car because they stopped and they took the extra time, dollars, and effort uh, to get to that place. New bumper, uh, new emblems, new call-outs, all the things are in the right place. The right exhaust tips, you say, well, Tone, aren't they supposed to all have exhaust tips? Yes. However, the exhaust tips for these cars are pretty expensive. They have to be welded on properly and they need to stick out to just the right amount to look good. And then if you look underneath here, you can see the nice hanging down sway bar, the 12 bolt rear end, it's nicely detailed. This is just like a great car. That little stuff makes a difference. And then lastly, let's say you want to go to a car show, okay? This has nice new weather stripping in here. This is all painted nicely and it's not filled with goop and, and sealer, right? There's the correct decals in here for jacking instruction and positive traction warning. It even has a spare tire and jack in here. Sorry, I had to look and make sure the jack was in there. Spare tire and jack, you say, Tone, it's got a spare tire and jack, who cares? Well, I'm telling you, you'll care because none of these cars ever come with it. The fact is we got it with this car, another step of why this car is a little bit nicer than others. All right, so you're walking up to your big block Chevelle. You go, man, this is a great looking car. However, everyone else is going to see this part. They're not going to get to see the part that we're going to do right now. And that's what I do is get inside what might call the cockpit. All right. So why do you buy a Chevelle? Well, you buy a Chevelle because it's a nice size, full size car that's comfortable. Like look at all the room in here. I'm 6'1". I've got tons of room everywhere. I could take another couple out in the car. Um, to take the kids with me. Uh, it seats three in the back, two in the front. Like it's, it's just comfortable. This one in particular has the original AM FM in it, right? Factory air conditioning, cigarette lighter, this nice console and buckets, a correct shift knob on it, right? Why is this a correct shift knob, you ask? Well, isn't it supposed to be white with the pattern on it? No, it is not supposed to be white with the pattern on it. Why? Because the pattern's already on the console, right? So you wouldn't want it on here and there. Although I like a white shift knob with the pattern on it, we can certainly install that if that's what you want, but that's the correct way to have it. Correct 72 wheel, not the 70 series with the stainless and the other look to it. And this has the upgraded dash, right? So it has the factory tack, it has a speedometer, it has a clock and it has full gauges that's not standard right an ss dash looks like this but doesn't come with gauges it only comes with a speedometer and a fuel gauge okay so uh that's another option there again i bring it up all this stuff to you because there's so many differences between chevelles this one just happens to have so many options options and options checking off checking off uh, if there's any missing, there's just a couple of them and they can certainly be added if you want to, but it pretty much has almost everything you get. And not to mention, it's really comfortable inside here. All right, so this is a collector car. Why is it a collector car? It's a collector car because in 1972, it was the most expensive Chevelle. Basically, you could get it. It has so many options on this car. Maybe it doesn't have every option, but it has so many on there from the cal induction hood, air conditioning, Four speed, not a three speed, okay? Uh, the big 454 in here. Uh, power steering. The rally dash was factory tack and gauges. Instead of a bench seat, bucket seats, and a console, right? It goes on and on and on just about how many things are here. I love hood pins. Like every time I see a car with hood pins, I'm like, that's the best, coolest thing ever. Anyway, this is how you want to get a car. This car is, is just not a molested. It's a beautifully driving, beautifully restored car. And I tell you, man, going to dinner with another couple in this car, or going out with a kid somewhere in it is a game changer. Anyway, call us 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this cool 72 Chevelle 454 four-speed. And if you don't mind, hit the like button down below. That helps us out as well. Share it with your friends. I think they might like it too. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We've got new stuff coming out all the time. And I'll see you on the test drive. Well, thanks for joining me on today's video. You say, 
Well, tell them, what's it like to drive a big block four-speed Chevelle with the flapper door doing its thing, right? It is amazing. <laughs> it's the best day ever, ever. Sorry, I get so excited, man. When you get to drive this stuff, this is why we do what we do. This is why you need this car. I don't even need to flip on the AC yet, but I'm enjoying the tack rising and falling. The gauges are working like they're supposed to. This is what a Chevelle, a, this, a Chevelle is a body on frame uh, vehicle. And it makes a big difference when you're riding. Just stop in here for a second, let this bicycle just go by. That way we can accelerate again and go. I don't like to spin the tires in your car, but I just want you to see the power. Whoa, that is, and it just lays it down too. No spinning of the tires. And I'm not revving it and driving it too hard because it's your car. I just wanted you to know that when you do get it, you're gonna get one of these because it's a lot of fun. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the drive. Thanks so much for riding with the big block four-speed Chevelle, and I'll see you on the next one.